Welcome back to Clarion Connection. I'm Ron Wilshire. My guest today is Steve Truitt, uh, DJ Scuba <laughs> Steve Truitt. <laughs> and we were talking before the break about the uh, list of 10 jobs that are projected to shrink in uh, 2012, and one of them was a broadcast announcer. And I understand that maybe just to hedge your bets, you also uh, picked up another announcing job recently. Yeah, I uh, was approached actually over the winter time from a racing organization that's uh, that's actually 23 years old here in the Pennsylvania area, the Keystone Unlimited All Stars, which is actually a national uh, race karting or muscle cart uh, organization. Places, I mean, ac I mean, literally across the country, Washington. I think they're getting one started in Iowa. There's Virginia. There's Ohio. They all have different regions and things of that nature. What are, what are muscle carts? Uh, Nothing with steroids. Or well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, whenever I first got into to understanding what my, my wife, she had raced for several years. And when we started dating, you know, she goes, come up and watch me race carts. And all I could think of was those ones at Cook Forest, those little yeah, putt putt things right. up there. Uh, actually, this is like the... Um, and some would consider it entry. Some of the run for the lifetime. It's uh, they're based off of a certain engine size, and uh, typically run off of alcohol or methanol, and things of that nature. So at one, you know, the stock class you could say is taking a start out kind of like the the with McCullough's and two stroke engines and things of that nature, have moved their way to um, the old rototiller motors. You know, the old Briggs and Stratton pool, flat topped. They just basically have a spark plug on the top, and then you got your carburetor and fuel tank and exhaust on it, and then they started modifying them. That sounds like Knox's horse thief days, the uh, lawnmower races. The lawnmower races. Well, you know what? Um, you know, they do actually, at one of the tracks we were at here, not route not too long ago, in, in Slippery Rock, they actually race lawnmowers there. So, which is actually pretty cool. And if you have ever got a chance to see them run laps around an eighth mile dirt track, that's, it's actually pretty cool. But, uh, basically, you know, it's kind of evolved from there to, you know, tweaking those little five horses to being stock 11 to 13 horsepower out of a block. And then it got bigger and the classes that, um, that some of the ones that run are uh, close to 18 to 20 horsepower out of a five horsepower block. And now there's the... They are pseudo Honda motors, six and a half horse Honda motors, which are now making 13 horsepower, or which they can get from the, like the little blue motors that were on water pumps that you buy from Harbor Freight as replacements. Uh, but it keeps evolving. It's another section of racing. We're talking about specified chassis. We're talking about tires. We're talking about gearing. We're talking about, and actually uh, professional organizations like the AKRA, American Kart Racing Association, and the World Kart, uh, Karting Association, the WKA, nationally sanctioned forms of racing. Now, the one I'm working with is the Unlimited All-Stars and the Keystone Racing All-Stars. Uh, the Unlimited All-Stars, as mentioned, in muscle carts, these are going up another level on power. We're talking about taking something, a frame, small frame, at, you know, going... It, it, it's a better visual than, than, a, than an oral explanation... But you can add on two strokes and whatever you can design. Their motto is ingenuity, camaraderie, and sportsmanship. And there's a gentleman who's racing with a uh, Polaris, 250 Polaris snowmobile motor on this. Um, it, it opens up to, uh, you know, 150, 125s, 100cc Perillas, uh, Sudoms, two-stroke motors. In essence, you can put them together to make double up, up to the weight limit stations and uh, things to that nature. And, uh, I mean, even uh, Wankels or the rotary motors like are in the, the like smaller forms of what's in a Mazda RX, uh, those are actually motors to run, the big modified ones. And we're talking anywhere between 30 to 70, 80, and the possibility of, uh, of pushing it up closer to 90 horsepower on something that weighs, uh, on a frame that weighs about 100 pounds. Wow, and where where do they <laughs> where do they do this racing? What tracks are available? Now, uh, with the All Stars, the, they they're a touring group, so we go across the state. We started off the season in Blairsville, on the other side of Indiana, out that way. 
Uh, the second race of the season was at Slippery Rock down, you know, of course, Slippery Rock, <laughs> Slippery mm-hmm. Rock Raceway. And our third race of this year was rained out. And it's been rescheduled, but that was at Coe Valley. That's on the other side of Altoona. We were down there. So we're on a little bit of a hiatus here for a couple of weeks, which is good because I have a wedding to go to this weekend and then a class reunion next weekend. So kind of got a little bit of a break, but then we'll be in uh, Ohio, the edge of it's Ohio. Kind of the all-star break. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> what, what, now, okay, you've been out, asked to announce these events. and uh, what is it announcing just for the track or does it go on uh, the internet or radio or so, at some point? I, I announced for this traveling group itself, their heats and their feature, and it actually gets posted to their website. It's keystoneallstars.weebly.com. If you type in like Keystone Racing All-Stars in your favorite search engine of choice, uh, it will come up there. And it's actually under the title Keystone Lightning. And uh, we're, we're getting some quite a few uh, positive results. What I do is uh, we'll edit it down, put sponsorship mentions and stuff in there, and uh, put it all together as a package for anybody who may have missed the race or somebody who might be interested. They can listen in and hear the moment-by-moment moment call passes, laps for each heat each of the two heats in the feature. So. so you have to be pretty alert with all these little vehicles buzzing. <laughs> yeah. Around. So do you ever get dizzy? <laughs> uh, you know, you, you get so focused on one thing or another that, that uh, you're, you're trying to make the call and you're not, you're not watching. You know, you may be watching something over on this side and something else happened to your left and you're just kind of, it's kind of very quick. But I mean, you could take 20 laps and turn it out in five minutes, less than five minutes, you know. Uh, things like that nature. So they're really moving. They're flying out there. And uh, it's a really, really cool sight to see. And uh, close to the area, we're going to be in Dubois for, at Race One Speedway. Their, their website is raceoneinfo.com if you want in directions out there off of Oklahoma Salem Road in Dubois on June 23rd. June 23rd will be in Dubois. So if those in the listening area want to go check out something pretty cool, and uh, see these things go because they're, they're not your uh, they're not your average, uh, you know, you'll go out there and you'll go, what's that smell? Ah, that's the smell of tires and alcohol and oil and and things like that. And it's like it, it's a it's a racing experience that um, is great because, you know, some kids start when they're, you know, five, five years old. I think he is the youngest that you can get into the kid carts up until Slippery Rock has a class or over 55. How do you know all that stuff you were talking about with the uh, <laughs> with the engines and things? Or did your wife make you learn it? Uh, you know, it's, it's just stuff you pick up as as things go along. I mean, you just kind of keep your head immersed in it. And it's been well over 10 years since I've been in oh. it. So, I mean, there's there's some things that uh, that are plus or minus in, in my old memory and stuff like that. But as I'm sitting here with a thing that actually says calculating minimum weight and then identifying engine types for the All-Stars... Uh, I'm still learning every day. Every day I learn something new and uh, and a new way to go. So, is uh, are these races expensive for the audience to attend? Uh, usually, usually a spectator can be whatever the tracks charge different for the spectatorship. So they could be either between three and five bucks. Or oh, okay, so it's a pit pass can be ten, something mm-hmm. like that. So, and you can walk around and see what all's going on. I mean, it's really reasonable and it's and it's nice because. Uh, or one friends who they had a sign on their side of their machine that said a family that races together stays together. And that's what they did. It was a family. They all race together and and it's about friendship and having fun and having a good time. So, well, sounds good. And it's, it's, it's good that you're preparing if, you know, if, if the broadcast announcer job doesn't work (laughs) out that uh, there are alternatives out there. Yep. So, Hey, thanks for uh, sharing some time with us this morning. You've been listening to Clarion Connection. I'm Ron Wilshire with Steve Truitt.